In this video, we're going to take a look at the color palette within Carveco. Now, normally when you start the program, you will be greeted with a color palette that looks like this. Now, the color palette is located down in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. Okay, and normally it gives you these colors. Now, the only time that it won't give you these colors is when you load an image into the software. So here you can see that I've got a different bitmap player. This is called New York 001. So if I click on that, it shows me that image. And down the bottom, the colors are different. So the colors that are in this color palette are whatever's made up of this image. Okay, so there are 256 colors here. And even though it's a green and a white image, there are different shades of greens and different shades of whites in there. So if I were to, let's say, zoom in on New York, you can see that I've got different shades of green in there. OK, now, if I wanted to, let's say, trace around this or whatever, I would need to basically merge these colors together because the program uses one color to trace around. OK, so all of this is done using the color palette. And I'll show you some of the options that you can do with using it. OK, so the color palette is down the bottom of the screen. And at the moment, it's quite full. So normally it would look like this and you just have these colors in there, okay? So because I'm using an image, it's going to have 256 colors. So if I click on the bottom arrow, I can scroll through all of the colors that are available within this, okay? Now I'll just show you how these work down the bottom. So you see here, we have two different types of greens. Now, the one that's over the top, the one in the top left, that is the primary color. So that's the first color. The one below that is the secondary color. Okay. Now, if I wanted to change that, let's say I wanted the primary color to be more of a white color. Let me just go down. And if I left click on the color that I want to be the primary. So if I left click there, it becomes the primary color. I can also right click and that changes the secondary color. So you can see both of those are white now. Now I can do that on the original bitmap layer. So at the moment by default, the primary color is black, the secondary color is white. So let's say that I wanted the primary color to be red and the secondary color to be this yellow color. So right click on that. And there you can see primary is red, secondary is yellow. Okay. I'll explain why these are important in a moment. Just show you how to use the tool. Okay. So you'll also notice that there's this little chain here. This basically means that it's going to link the two colors together and turn one color into another color. So to do that, let's say I selected that color and I wanted to turn all of this white color into this green color. If I click on it, you can see that what's happened is it's turned all of that white color into that green. Now, it doesn't show you within here, it shows you here that there's a link between the two. So this white color is slightly smaller and there's also a line going between them. Now, this is really, really useful if you did want to do, say, a tracing and you wanted to merge colors into each other, but you didn't want the program to automatically do it. So you wanted to tell it what colors you wanted to merge so you could make sure that you get it perfectly right. OK, now a couple of ways to undo that. The menu to get into the color palette is either right click on these two colors down here and it gives you a menu or you can select the bitmap drop down and then go down to color and you get the menu there. Okay. 
Now, if I select reset all links, this will remove what I've just created. Okay, and it goes back to normal and I haven't got any links there anymore. If I come to the bitmap drop down again, then I come down to colors, then I've got add colors. I'll go through that in a moment. I've got link on link. Now that does exactly the same as what I've got here. So if I were to select those again, and what I'll do rather than use the drop down here, I'm just going to, for the purpose of this tutorial, right click down here. I find it much easier to do that. So I'm going to click to link. So that does exactly the same thing as what this chain does here. If I select the chain again, it unlinks them, okay? And I can also do that by selecting link or unlink in the menu. Okay, and it goes back. Now you've also got link all colors. So all of the colors will be linked together and then basically you can't change them. Okay, so it's sort of a, a way to lock colors. So if I right click, reset all links. If I right click and select merge, what this does, rather than link them together, it actually combines them and I can't go back from that. The only way is to undo it, okay? Linking them allows me to select unlink and then I can go back. I only really use this if I really wanted these two colors to be exactly the same. So if I undo that, it will go back, okay? Right click again, and then we've got reduce number. So if I select reduce number, this gives you the exact same dialog as when you trace around the image. Okay, so automatically that becomes 32 colors. Okay, so if I bring that right the way down, let's say to two colors, you can see that I've just got my two colors, white and green. Select apply. Just got the two colors in the color palette. Okay. With that reduced, I left add colors because I didn't want to add them to a palette that was already full. Okay. It wouldn't let me because I already had all of the colors assigned in there. So if I now select add colors, and we've got these preset colors. But if you were to select a preset color and then just select OK, it wouldn't add it to the color palette. What you need to do is select the color, add it to the custom colors, and then select OK. And then that will add to the color palette. You can also right click here. It doesn't necessarily need to be on the primary and secondary color. You can do it anywhere along the bottom as long as it's along the color palette. If you do it just a little bit lower, it gives you a different menu, okay? So make sure that you do that just a little bit above where the colors would normally be. So if I add another color, I can also use this method. So I've got this wheel where I can just choose whatever color that I want. Let's say that I wanted the real mint green sort of color add that to the custom colors and then select okay and it adds it there okay now when you add a color it then becomes the primary color so if you want to go back to the white being the primary color left click on it right so you've also got thin so if i were to select let's say that color as the primary color. So let's say this New York here. So what this will do, it will basically thin the line out. So it will make the line smaller and have less pixels in there. Now, because I've got the white selected as the secondary color, it's going to blend into the white. So if I right click and then select thin, and then if I select keep processing until finished, this will thin 
the line out until it's just one pixel. Okay, so if I select OK, you can see it's thinned that line out just so it gives me one pixel as the outline. If I undo that and then try that again, but this time limit the number of passes to, let's say, one, so it's going to shave off one pixel around that edge. So if I select OK, you can see that it's made it smaller by one pixel. If I undo that, do it again, and then change that to, let's say, two, it will make it even smaller. Okay, so this is how you can sort of edit a bitmap image. Now, before I go on to thicken, I also need to explain what this button does. If I select that, it switches the primary and the secondary color around. Okay, so if you ever need to do that, just click on that button down there and it swaps them around. Okay, now to do a thicken, the two colors need to be the same. So if I make the secondary color the same color as this, and then I go to thicken, and let's just do one pixel for the moment, select OK, and it makes it larger. If I were to do that again, and let's make it five pixels, you can see it makes it a lot larger. Okay, so if I undo that, and go back to the start. Right, so if I right click and mark edge, now this says down the bottom, it gives me a, a description of what it's going to do. So it's saying mark edge pixels of primary color in the secondary color. So let's say that I change that to be, let's add a color. Let's add, let's say red as a color. Okay, so it marks the edge of the pixels of the primary color in the secondary color. So I need to switch these around. Okay, so what this is going to do, it's going to mark the edge of all of the green in red. Okay, so right click, mark edge, and it gives me an outline in red. Okay, now if I wanted to, I can thicken up this red now. So if I left click on the red and then thicken, maybe make that two pixels, you can see that it makes that larger, okay? So using the color palette, you can do a few different things and it's more of an artistic paint sort of application. Right, so you've got Mark Edge. You've also got Save Palette and Load Palette. So this basically allows me to save my preferred colors. And then if I wanted to, if I were bringing them in and let's say starting something from scratch, I could then load in the palette. Okay, so that is basically what the color palette does.